24 hours later, criminal charges are announced against the suspect in yesterday's deadly parade shooting near Chicago. As police say, he traveled to our area after the attack. Plus, we're looking into how local authorities are stepping up enforcement for local large events in the near future. And new video shows the moment of panic at another 4th of July celebration. The latest from that case straight ahead. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. And thanks for joining us. Heavy rain and localized flooding, both potential threats tonight as more storms roll through southern Wisconsin. The biggest thing we're keeping an eye on, active flash flood warnings. Let's go right to meteorologist Dana Fulton with our certified most accurate forecast. We have seen some really heavy rainfall pass through over the last several hours, and we're expecting more heavy rainfall overnight. We do still have a severe thunderstorm watch for some areas. Our southwesternmost counties, including Grant County, Iowa County, and Lafayette counties, until May. Midnight, but the focus has really shifted to those flash flood warnings. Parts of Dane County under a flash flood warning until 1115. Grant County, the northeastern portion until 2 a.m. Also a flash flood warning in effect north of Monroe and Greene County. Those areas have seen significant rainfall. Anywhere from three to four inches. Some areas picking up more than four inches just outside of Janesville for the western edge of Rock County. And again, we're still expecting more rain to build through overnight. Here's a look at our Doppler track over the last hour. And you can see those steady showers continuing for us. We're going to take a closer look at when the rain does completely clear out of the area in just a few minutes. Thank you. And as that severe thunderstorm watch remains in effect until midnight, stay up to date on all things local weather. The easiest way to do it, download our free First Warn weather app. President Biden ordered flags to be lowered to half staff today, a day after the deadly mass shooting at a 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois. The president ordered the flags to remain at half staff through this Saturday. The suspect in the case identified as this man, 21 year old Robert Cremo III. He was taken into custody after an hours long manhunt yesterday. Prosecutors are charging him with seven counts of first degree murder with more charges in the works. Well, here's what we learned today. Cremo was allegedly dressed in women's clothing at the time of that attack. Police say in an attempt to blend in during his escape, he shot down into the crowd more than 70 times from a rooftop that he accessed by climbing up a fire escape. They say the gun he used, which police say was similar to an AR-15, was legally purchased in the Chicago area. And tonight we also learned the alleged gunman also drove to the Madison area after the shooting before returning to Illinois where he was ultimately arrested. Madison Police Chief Sean Barnes declined to comment but in a blog post says the FBI did reach out to area law enforcement. Investigators say it appears Cremo worked alone and had been planning the attack for weeks before carrying it out. Officers visited the suspect's home twice in 2019, the first time for a reported suicide attempt, the second after he allegedly threatened his family. A family member reported that Cremo said he was going to kill everyone and Cremo had a collection of knives. The police removed 16 knives, a dagger and a sword from Cremo's home. At that time, there was no probable cause to arrest. The sheriff's office says the encounter was reported to the state police at the time. Primo is expected to make his first court appearance tomorrow. And according to the Gun Violence Archive, yesterday's shooting was the 309th mass shooting in America. This year alone, the nonprofit tracks shootings in which at least four people are wounded or killed, excluding the shooter. And since yesterday, as of this morning, there have been 314 mass shootings. Well, locally, there are a lot of questions about safety and security at Madison's many big public events. Madison Police Chief Sean Barnes says his department will keep up with their method of fully staffing events and working with the community. Armand Rahman spoke with the chief and he has more. Armand? Eric and Charlotte, Madison Police Chief Sean Barnes says here the 4th of July weekend was relatively safe. An example of how the community and law enforcement work together and need to continue doing so after yesterday's tragic shooting. My heart, number one, goes out uh, to everyone in Highland Park or everyone in the surrounding areas. While Monday's shooting at a holiday parade in Highland Illinois could cause some anxiety for future large public events. I think the idea is to always be at heightened alert. Madison Police Chief Sean Barnes says he always makes sure enough officers are stationed at each protest, festival, and concert in town. Uh, one of the things that we do very well here is that we staff uh, to our maximum level. So it's never an issue of, of uh, decreasing staff. We can always add more staff. And MPD's eyes and ears at events go beyond just officers. You know, we have everything from the um, unmanned aircraft uh, to people on the ground, 
Uh, we have Overwatch. Uh, we have all of these things in place that our public uh, doesn't really see because we want them to enjoy whatever event that they're on. A recent uptick in crime caused Chief Barnes to promise more police in high visibility areas and plead for community support this 4th of July in Madison. Our officers and their special operations really paid uh, great dividends. This partnership, he says, led to a good holiday here. I mean, it's our model. It's what we want to do absolutely every day, not just on holiday weekends, and I think it definitely shows you know, we are safe in Madison. And I reached out to several event organizers today to see their plans in light of the Highland Park shooting. Joe Lennis, CEO of the Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra, couldn't sit down for an interview, but he tells me they will be increasing the presence of first responders and law enforcement at concerts on the square tomorrow. Armand, thank you. A quick note about this weekend's Farmer's Market. They'll be moving over to Bree Stevens Field Saturday. That is because Art Fair on the square will be held at the same time. So as we continue to learn more about the shooting suspect, his trip to Wisconsin after the shooting, the victims, and a possible motive, be sure to stay with News 3 Now and Channel3000.com for any and all updates. We're also seeing new video tonight showing the moment chaos erupted in Orlando, Florida yesterday during the city's fireworks show. At least 12 people were injured while running from the scare, which police said may have been caused by firecrackers or some other type of firework thrown into the crowd just after the main fireworks show began. So some witnesses said they heard what they believed were gunshots. However, police said there was no evidence of a shooting. And in Philadelphia last night, two police officers were shot during 4th of July festivities. People were seen running and screaming as gunshots were heard at the celebration. The two officers were hit just as the fireworks were getting underway. One hit shot in the shoulder, the other a graze wound to the head. Both were transported to Jefferson Hospital and were placed in stable condition. No suspects have been taken into custody. One of those additional mass shootings happened in Kenosha overnight. Both Bullet holes and police tape can be seen still today, as well as broken glass from car windows still all over the street. One adult was killed, four others transported to the hospital, two of them with serious injuries. Police are still searching for suspects. And more local news, the TSA says officers prevented this handgun from making it on board an airplane at Dane County Regional Airport over the weekend. It was found in some carry-on luggage Saturday. The traveler, a Middleton resident, did not have a concealed carry permit. This is the third firearm found at the airport this year. New tonight. A Dane County judge set a $60,000 cash bond this afternoon for this man, 38-year-old Timothy Pritchett. He's facing charges of hit and run involving death and homicide by negligent operation of a vehicle stemming from a hit and run in the town of Oregon last month. 30-year-old Logan Geths died in the crash. Investigators say he was hit on June 7th along County Highway MM, but he wasn't found until the following day by a passing truck driver. According to the complaint, Pritchett told police he thought he had hit a deer, but after detectives reviewed his cell phone data, Pritchett said he may have been on a FaceTime call at the time of the crash. Well, some incredible video tonight showing the moment a mob attacked an Illinois State Police officer. The video was shot on an exit ramp where the group was stopping traffic and shooting off fireworks. Chicago, we got a mob. He just jumped on my car. Window. Police say there were around a hundred people there and they quickly swarmed the squad car, jumping on the hood, breaking the windshield, kicking the vehicle and throwing rocks, bricks and fireworks. No injuries were reported and the investigation is ongoing. Next at 10, some key allies of former President Trump have been subpoenaed by an Atlanta area grand jury. The grand jury investigating Trump's attempts to overturn the 2020 election in that state. They've issued subpoenas to Trump's former attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. The subpoenas also cover a handful of Trump's other former legal advisors. Campaign coverage now. Republican candidate Kevin Nicholson is suspending his run for governor. Nicholson said he is proud of what he has built over the course of his six-month campaign, but determined his only way forward would have been to attack other Republican candidates and run a negative campaign, something he did not want to do. NATO today formally beginning the process of ratifying membership of Sweden and Finland into the alliance. NATO members today formally signed the Protocols of Ascension. The two countries broke away from their decades of neutrality after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The wife of WNBA star Brittany Griner tells CBS News she will not be quiet anymore. Sherelle Griner's interview on CBS Mornings comes a day after the White House received a letter directly from Griner in which the athlete who is being detained in Russia 
pleads with the president to do all he can to bring her and other American detainees home. Michael George has the latest. The wife of WNBA star Brittany Griner says it breaks her heart to hear the contents of a letter the basketball player wrote to President Biden. According to a representative, Griner, who was arrested in Russia in February on charges of possessing cannabis oil, wrote in part, I'm terrified I might be here forever. She doesn't say words like that um, lightly. That means she truly is terrified um, that she may never see us again. And, you know, I share those same sentiments. Griner's trial began last week in Russia. The U.S. says she's being wrongfully detained. In her personal plea, Griner urged President Biden to free all U.S. captives, writing, quote, I realize you're dealing with so much, but please don't forget about me and the other American detainees. Please do all you can to bring us home. In an interview on CBS Mornings, her wife Wife Sherelle Griner says she's done letting the government handle things behind the scenes. I will not be quiet anymore. Um, I will find that balance of, you know, harm versus help in pushing our government to do everything that's possible because being quiet, they are not moving. White House Press Secretary Corrine Jean-Pierre says getting Griner home safe is a priority. This has been on top of mind of the president. Like I was there when he read the letter. He takes this job um, very seriously, especially when it comes to bringing home U.S. nationals who are um, wrongfully detained. But Griner's wife is still waiting for a direct response from President Biden. I still have not heard from him, and honestly, um, it's very disheartening. In the letter, which was delivered on the 4th of July, Grind wrote freedom means something completely different to her this year. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Well, Griner's trial is set to resume on Thursday. Today, President Biden awarded four men who fought in the Vietnam War the nation's highest honor for their military service, the Medal of Honor. The president praised their heroism on the battlefield, now more than 50 years later, saying time has not diminished their bravery. During the ceremony, the president gave a nod to the federal government's efforts to review the service of Asian Americans, Native Americans, and Pacific Islanders, noting the diverse backgrounds of today's honorees. For those who give their best for our country, we'll always, always give our best to you. Since taking office, President Biden has also awarded the Medal of Honor to four other service members. Today's ceremony comes just days after the death of Herschel Woody Williams, who was the last surviving Medal of Honor recipient for his service in World War II. He will lie in honor at the U.S. Capitol later this week. And over the weekend, this World War II veteran Bradford Freeman joined the rest of his band of brothers. Freeman was the last surviving member of Easy Company 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division. The unit, made famous by the book and miniseries Band of Brothers, was instrumental in key battles in the European theater, from the D-Day invasion to the Battle of the Bulge and the liberation of the concentration camps. Freeman participated in them all. He was 97 years old. And still to come tonight at 10, Dana Fulton will have her updated forecast when we return. Now, first, AMC bringing back Discount Tuesdays. We'll have that and more when we return. gas prices. My lineup brings serious savings. We got this. Toyota hybrids. Get 1.9% APR for 48 months on Toyota's most popular 2022 models. Toyota, let's go places. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection, a name you can trust when service is a must. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection is here 24 hours a day. Seven days a week for all your residential and commercial plumbing services. From installation, repairs, and maintenance to complete sewer and drain cleaning, we've got you covered. Visit MononaPFP.com. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection, a name you can trust when service is a must. What are you recommending for muscle pain? Based on clinical data, I recommend Salon Pass. Agreed. My patients like these patches because they work up to 12 hours, even on moderate pain. Salon Pass, it's good medicine. Send me to Join iHeart Media Madison for our Vet Aid Pop Up Concert, benefiting veterans in crisis. 6 p.m. Tuesday, July 12th at Harris Park in Dodgeville, featuring the Mascot Theory. Ooh, 
with special guest, the Driftless Rambler. A $10 suggested donation goes directly to Heat for Heroes, helping vets and their families facing an energy-related or emergency housing crisis. Visit VetAWI.com for more info. It's our Vet Aid pop-up concert, Tuesday, July 12, presented by Land's End and iHeartMedia Madison. There's lots of grown-up fun in the water park capital of the world, but where? Well, where tasty drinks meet relaxing pools, that's where, where all the action is. Where the rubber meets the road, and then meets the water. Water parks, they're here, there, and everywhere. Now, where was I? Probably somewhere like here. Mm, nice glassware. Hungry? There's plenty more where that came from. Where do we go from here? Well, just about anywhere. Wisconsin Dells, <laughs> where it's at. Plan your grown-up getaway at wisdells.com. Wipes, wipes, wipes. Why the waste? Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water with reusable EcoPad. My cells work like a magnet. Now leave less mascara residue than the leading wipes. With no wipe waste. Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water and reusable EcoPad by Garnier. Naturally. Dear gas prices, my lineup brings serious savings. We got this. Toyota Hybrids. Get 1.9% APR for 48 months on Toyota's most popular 2022 models. Toyota, let's go places. Many of us are guilty of it, but sometimes road rage can get the better of us. Tomorrow, we'll share some ways to stay calm behind the wheel. And when we could see more rain, tomorrow morning, we're breaking down the impacts and the timing right here from 4.30 to 7. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. U.S. air travel continues to soar with no major meltdowns at U.S. airports over July 4th. The TSA said it screened more than 11.2 million people over the holiday weekend. That's the 30th day in a row in which more than 2 million people passed through airport security checkpoints. Air travel peaked on Friday when the TSA screened nearly 2.5 million people. That is the highest figure since February 11th of 2020. Subway's menu is getting a redo. It marks the sandwich chain's largest makeover in decades. Subway now offers customers 12 sandwiches called the Subway Series. These are split into four categories, cheese steaks, chicken, clubs, and Italianos. Analysts say streamlining the sandwiches should move the customer lines along faster. Film buffs have a new reason to see more movies over the next few months. AMC Theaters is now offering $5 discount Tuesdays. Tickets will be $5 plus tax for all members of the AMC Stubbs program, which is free to join. Discount Tuesdays run through the end of October, and to sweeten the deal, AMC also has popcorn and drink specials set for Tuesdays. And check this out. Having a new car doesn't necessarily mean you'll have less car trouble. J.D. Power reports people had more problems in the first 90 days of having a new vehicle than ever before. More than 84,000 people who had bought or leased a model 2022 vehicle were surveyed. 11% reported more issues than in 2021. A first warrant traffic note tonight. The Merrimack Ferry is now closed for repairs until further notice. The DOT says the issue appears to be with a hydraulic system. They also did not provide a timeline as to when the ferry could resume operations. A stormy night across southern Wisconsin with our certified most accurate forecast. Now here is meteorologist Dana Fulton. Dana? We've had some really heavy rainfall, a little bit of a, a bumpy evening for some folks, and we still have more rain building into the area right now. Uh, we do have a severe thunderstorm watch for our southwestern counties. Most of the area has been pulled out of that watch, but we're still keeping a close eye mainly on Grant County, Lafayette County, and, and stretching into Iowa County with that watch still going until midnight. Again, it's been a very soggy evening. These storms trailing each other and bringing very heavy rainfall, so we've seen our accumulation totals really climb up. We've also seen some hail reports in eastern Grant County, close to a quarter size. Same goes for western Rock County, so the, these storms bringing in hail, some high winds at times, and this heavy rainfall because of the heavy rain threat, we do have several flash flood warnings in effect right now for the northwestern portion of Greene County, just outside of Madison, and also in the northeastern portion of Grant County until 2 a.m. Along that line, we picked up close to three to four inches of rain, some areas a little over four inches. And while the northern portion of Madison hasn't picked up quite as much, it's an area prone to flooding. So keep that in mind tomorrow morning as we have more rain coming through tonight. Our third shift workers and those early morning risers, it's going to be a little soggy outside 
outside early in the day. These storms forming right along a stationary front that really didn't divide our temperatures much today between southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois, but it did provide that path, that fuel for those storms to build up this afternoon. And we're going to continue to see heavy rainfall up until about midnight. Things fizzle a bit as they move east. So the heaviest rain over the next few hours will be for those western counties where there is still a severe thunderstorm watch until midnight. By tomorrow morning, there's a chance for a few isolated showers. Otherwise, temperatures in the afternoon expected to climb to the upper 70s. As we look ahead to Thursday, plan on overnight lows in the mid 60s. Afternoon highs will climb up close to 80 in the low 80s with a line of some shower and thunderstorm chances creeping in in the late afternoon and evening. On top of the rain that we've already received overnight, we're expecting to add another one to two inches for areas in Grant County and stretching into Sauk County and Iowa County. Not quite as much for our eastern counties. Again, as things move east, it will fizzle out, but we are going to still see some heavy rainfall up until about midnight. So please keep that in mind uh, as we do have those flash flood warnings in effect right now as you head out early in the morning tomorrow. Don't try to drive through any deep puddles. If you can't see the road, then you don't know if the road has been washed out from this heavy rainfall. And of course, don't try to swim or play in any of the floodwaters or flooded areas. You don't know what's mixing around in that water. For tomorrow, high temperatures will be in the upper 70s, cooler outside and still humid. We will have some showers and thunderstorms early in the day, but likely seeing a little more clearing in the afternoon. Close to 80 for afternoon highs through the weekend. We have a slight chance for showers on Friday and then sunshine for Saturday and Sunday. A nice forecast expected for us for Saturday and Sunday. Showers and thunderstorms Sunday night into Monday. We start the work week off with that rain chance and by the middle and, and back half of the work week, it looks like we settle into a pattern with sunshine. It'll be nice to enjoy dry weather for a few days with high temperatures in the lower 80s and overnight lows landing in the mid to low 60s. And coming up in sports, it will be Badger against Badger on Saturday before a good cause. Why Alec Ingold is excited to hit the diamond. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. When the family can't get enough of your signature dish, get everything you need with Pick and Save Free Pickup with no surprise fees. So start your cart today. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Politicians have been threatening it. Now the Supreme Court's done it, triggering a ban on nearly all abortions in Wisconsin, even in cases of rape and incest. And Senator Ron Johnson sided with them on overturning Roe v. Wade, punishing doctors and hurting people, putting our health and reproductive rights in danger. Johnson even said, if you don't like it, you can move. Tell Senator Ron Johnson to protect us, not punish us. As you remodel, don't toss your cabinets and appliances. Donate to Habitat Restore. Give your items a second life while proceeds build Habitat for Humanity homes. Donate today. Habitat Restore Dane County. Those brave men and women of our armed forces, generations of them, why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Donate today. It was a dream. I knew it was gonna be a lot of work, but I knew that the passion was gonna make it not seem like work. Jupaca was really there for me, helping me kind of gain financial literacy, everything from the business loan to setting up the LLC. Jupaco really was, was a great guide and, and a resource for me getting this whole entire project off the ground. There's been a couple of classes when I'll walk in, and especially when it's the busy room and I, I start to get choked up. Those are the days when it's like, this is what I was supposed to do. Stay big on your bathroom project with 11% off everything at Menards. Start your renovation with a new vanity from Magic Woods. With many sophisticated styles to choose from, it's easy to find the right match for your decor. Get 11% off all Magic Woods vanities. Complete the look with Shaw Vinyl Plank Flooring. It's waterproof and easy to install, making it a perfect choice for your bathroom. Get 11% off all Shaw flooring right now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. 
Brothers Maine enjoys 4th of July festivities with family, friends, and fabulous kitchen and laundry deals. Our fireworks of savings on GE appliances and free delivery will make you ooh and ah. Feel like family at Brothers Maine. With the Pick and Save app, you can get personalized coupons on top of weekly sales. All for prices that are lower than low. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. This Saturday, Bragging Rights will be on the line when Team Ingold takes on Team Decker in the Battle for Wisconsin Charity Softball game. Now, it's basically Wisconsin football legends up against Wisconsin basketball stars on a baseball diamond. And Captain Alec Ingold is excited to raise money for the Ingold Family Foundation, but he's also looking forward to beating Sam Decker and his Badger basketball buddies. Being able to create and to be able to give back to the community in a fun way, a competitive way. There's always a little bit of beef between football and basketball. Both of them are competing like crazy and doing great things. So um, finding a neutral ground for, uh, for a little competition and giving back to the community uh, through the foundation is, is always good too. Home Run Derby starts at 6.30. First pitch of the game at 7.30, all at Warner Park. We're going to have more from Alec on Thursday. Good news, bad news type of game for the Brewers tonight. Good news came in the first inning. One on for Rowdy Telez and two gone to put the crew up 2-0 just like that. But after that, it was all bad news. Cubbies scored the next eight runs. They go on to win 8-3. The rubber match is tomorrow at 1-10. Jonathan Taylor couldn't have scripted his second year in the NFL any better. The former Badger was the league's rushing leader last season, and in the process, he set the Colts' single-season rushing record. He recently was nominated for two ESPYs, Best NFL Player and Best Breakthrough Athlete. Needless to say, everyone wants a piece of JT, and for the man himself, it all still feels like a dream. Think about it as a kid, you, you watch those shows growing up in high school and college, and then you watch those guys that you looked up to do the same thing, and now when, when you're in it, you really have to look back on it, because while you're in it, you can't believe it. You kind of have to go back and look at the rerun and say, man, like I was really on a Pat Mack show. Like, I, I was really nominated for an SB. So um, it, it's, it's fun to look back, and while you're in it, it's, it's like a dream, man. After Stu Stanley Cups and five seasons with the Lightning, Ryan McDonough was traded to the Predators over the weekend. Today, the former Badger thanked Tampa Bay on his Instagram, calling it, quote, a dream come true to lift and win the Cup twice. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Excited for this next chapter for my family and I in Nashville. Here we come. And it was a pretty good night for Vito Brown in his summer league game against the Kings. The former Badger scored 13 points and grabbed four rebounds in 22 minutes on the floor for the Lakers. We're back after this. We all share the same roads, but when an accident happens, we don't always share the same consequences. Gruber Law Offices has been fighting and winning for people injured by big trucks for more than 30 years. One call, that's all. Incredible deals. Get 25% off our low Slumberland price. Huge markdowns. Plus 25% off our low Slumberland price. What a sale. The 4th of July sale at Slumberland Furniture. And he got so upset at me. Oh my god. Look. No way. She has definitely got some work done. Doesn't even look the same anymore. Talk about an extreme makeover. I wonder how much of Bob's money she spent on those upgrades. Hi! The house looks great, right? Three years, no interest on roofing and siding from Feldco. Right now, get three years, no interest on Feldco roofing and siding. Three years, no interest on Feldco roofing and siding and soon. Call now. 866 for Feldco. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built Ford Escape with an available head-up display and pre-collision assist. And Ford Edge with available enhanced active park assist and intelligent all-wheel drive. Both are IIHS top safety picks. That's value built for America. Ford SUVs. Drive one today. Choose FlexBuy on a 2022 Ford Escape or Edge SUV and get 0% financing for 66 months only at your local Ford dealer. 
Some people think it's really hard to find things to do in Nebraska. Lucky for you, we invent things to do. Like when we realized a livestock tank would float and thought, hey, it's a boat. And soon, tanking became our preferred mode of river travel. Might not get everyone's pulse racing like a jackhammer, but if it sounds good to you, welcome aboard. Nebraska. Honestly, it's not for everyone. It's Wow Wednesdays at hy V. This Wednesday, that smart cottage cheese, only 99 cents. Blue Bunny ice cream pails, only 477. Select giant size General Mills cereal, only 299. And six mega rolls of cotton L bath tissue, only 399. Wednesday only. And save even more during Red White and Fuel. Right now, save up to 534 per gallon with your hy V Fuel Saver Plus Perks card. And visit hyvdeals.com for even more deals. Not all accidents happen on busy freeways. They happen in neighborhoods like yours. No matter where your accident happens, Gruber Law Offices is here to help. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Channel 3000 Plus. Watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Alex, get your mowers ready. The Lawn Mower World Championships taking place over the weekend in a rural village in southeast England. Now, compared to Formula One, it's a lot cheaper for the speed demons out there to become a <laughs> world-class mower racer, costing only a few hundred bucks. Over the two-day racing weekend, there were dozens of races in different categories. Legend has it, the sport was born out of a meeting of enthusiastic motorsports fans in an English pub. That was back in 1973. I believe that story. <laughs> Sign like me that would, up. That, that does yeah, seem I'd like a lot of fun. That. We could do that but here. Yeah. Yeah. Are those really lawn mowers, though? Yeah, well, you have to take the blades out, obviously. What? I don't, no, I don't have mowers. That means, that means you're fun. Oh, I don't see mowers like that say, around yeah, no. Southern Wisconsin. With blades. <laughs> With blade competition. See what happens. <laughs> Catch us down at Elver Park. Just doing laps. Dana's <laughs> back. Final check of the forecast. It's a little soggy outside. Not great lawn mowing weather right now. Good news, though. The flash flood warning in Dane County has been canceled. We're still keeping an eye on eastern Grant County and uh, northwestern Greene County right now. We have the chance for a few showers lingering into early Wednesday. Otherwise, high temperatures in the upper 70s, mostly cloudy in the afternoon. Afternoon. We're close to 80 for highs through the weekend. Some more rain for Thursday and a slight chance on Friday, but sunshine for Saturday and Sunday. We'll have a rain chance to start off next week and then dry weather expected for the back half of next week. Really a seasonable trend stretching at that point to the middle of July. All right, Dana, thank you and thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good and we'll see you back here tomorrow.